Yeah, this is what I love to do, creating a photo series, telling an interesting or intriguing story with my photos. It's like taking different puzzle pieces and putting them together to create something that makes sense as a story, but also something visually pleasing. Now, I was really excited to make this video, and I still am, but whoa, it's difficult. I wanted to use my own award-winning series, Grey Summer Garden, as an example, and just deconstruct the process. Seems simple enough, right? But I started writing down bullet points and things I want to explain, and it's just impossible to compress all that in a video that's not 60 or even 90 minutes long. The problem is that the process behind creating a photo series is always different. Creating a photo series is like this living thing that grows and evolves and sometimes even mutates. So I'm not gonna give you a fixed list of steps you have to follow if you want to make a great photo series. That's almost impossible. But I will go over some of the key factors in my photo series creating process. Because some things do come back every time I make a new series. And I'm gonna focus on the actual selecting of photos, but also what you have to do before you start shooting to make it easier to select photos and create a coherent series. And at the end of the video a little bit about selecting for screen and selecting for print because that's totally different. <music> Okay, now before we start, I have divided this video into chapters, but they're not sequential steps you have to take to make a great photo series. Like I said, that's almost impossible. It's different for every project. Okay, let's just go for it, and I'll probably forget some things, but just ask me questions about specific details in the comments section. More than happy to help. I'll also put some timestamps in the description so it's easy to navigate, and we'll start with some things you have to do before you start shooting. My series Grey Summer Garden will be the main example throughout the video. Okay, let's go! You can find ideas everywhere. Ideas came to me when watching movies, documentaries, a simple sitcom, reading the newspaper or a magazine, walking in the streets, driving. An idea can pop up anywhere, anytime. But the thing is, this is already when you should start thinking about the photos you want to take. Start visualizing the project. Usually, I already have a vague idea of what I want the series to look like. Now, while a lot of ideas come out of nowhere, I also look for ideas, I search for them, I start browsing the internet with the purpose of finding an idea for a series. So I use Google to look for things that interest me and I read articles, but also, and this works better for me, I look at the work of other photographers to see if there's an idea I can steal. Now, of course, I'm not gonna copy an idea, but by looking at a photo series, an idea might pop up. Or maybe you think, yeah, that's a really good series, but what if I tell the story from this angle? Or take an idea from a photographer in a random country and bring that to your own country, but just don't copy it. But I can't stress this enough, if you want to be a good photographer, you need to look at the work of other photographers and take little pieces to develop your own style. That's totally fine. There are different reasons why you should research. First of all, you don't want to make mistakes or give people the wrong information or information that's deceiving. And it's also important to know everything about your subject so that you don't lose money or time when you start taking photos. You have to plan your project efficiently. If you only have three weeks, for example, you want to maximize those three weeks. You don't want to find out all of a sudden that a location is not accessible to the public. But research is also important for the selection process. You have to know what kind of images you're going to need to tell the story. When I'm researching, that vague idea that I had in the beginning starts to become more clear and I basically start taking photos in my head. So study your topic or your subject, magazines, books, the internet. Usually I spent weeks researching after I came up with an idea and the idea also becomes more concrete once you start learning more about the topic or the subject. And sometimes even you come to the conclusion that this project is not for you. It's impossible for you to do financially or because you don't have enough time. And the the most important thing is that a project constantly evolves and grows. The story might change, or at least the angle of the story, and you always get new ideas while working on the project. So researching is not just a step, it's an ongoing process during the whole project. If you're not making shot lists, start right now, because it will make everything so much easier. Now what is a shot list? So. You've started visualizing what the series should look like from the beginning. First vague, then a little bit more clear when researching, and now is the next step. Start imagining what you want the series to look like with more details, and then make a list 
with what kind of photos you will need to tell the story. It's not like portraits, close-ups, landscapes. No, it's with more details. It could be something like landscape with lonely barn in the distance at dawn or close-up of a man's beard. Once you know what story you want to tell and you've researched it, you know exactly what it's all about and you need to imagine what photos you need to tell that story. For me it's like this, usually before I start shooting I have an image in my head of the entire series and the story and I mean it's not super clear, I don't know exactly what every photo will look like but I know what direction I want to go in and I know what kind of images I need to tell that story. Half of the images that I need for my story are on my list and I stick to that and the other half gets added when I'm shooting on location you get a lot of new ideas you know. So before I started shooting Grey Summer Garden my shot list looked something like this. Man or woman with tattoos, grey brick houses, kids playing, kid on a bike, contrast between man-made objects and nature, full body portraits of all ages, close up of old man with beard, dogs or cats in the streets, melancholic scenes or landscapes. So that list is your guide while shooting and it can change a little bit, it can grow, but you need that list to help you on location. And you start making it while you research, but you can also do brainstorming sessions specifically to make that list. It's not that I make a list like that in an hour or a day, it starts growing from the moment you come up with an idea. But make sure you have one, because you need it to focus on your project. It will make everything so much easier and you'll be able to spend your time more efficiently. <music> Okay, so I don't want to talk too much about the photo taking part, you can check out some of my other videos on composition or photography tips, but I do want to mention a few things, a few important things when you want to make a photo series. First of all, there's the shot list, that's your guide when you take photos. If you don't have one, you might get overwhelmed and you don't know where to start. But also, don't just limit yourself to the shot list. While on location, while taking photos, you have to get new ideas to add to the shot list. But it's also important to already think about what the photo should look like aesthetically. Now that you're in the field, you can see the light. What kind of light do you want to use throughout the series? Do you want morning or evening light or just plain daylight? It's important to to create a coherent series. Also the composition of your photos, do you want them to be dynamic or static? Also really important to create a coherent series. Now all those things depend on what you want the story to feel like and the more you know before you start shooting the easier it is but trust me while in the field you get new ideas and that's when you really start to feel the story. And finally, taking photos for a photo series is a long process and usually the longer the better. You have to go deep into the story, peel the layers. You'll spend weeks or even months taking photos for the same project and every time you go out to take photos, the project will evolve and change. The first thing you need to do when you want to select photos for a series is not select photos. Yeah, just wait, it's something a lot of people forget. When you select the photos on the same day or a few days after you shot them, you're still emotionally connected to the photos or to the experiences while shooting the photos. Just wait a few weeks before you start selecting and looking at your photos again and then you can see them with fresh eyes and a fresh mind. That's really important for the story. That's why it can also help to let someone else look at your photos because they can see different things, things that you might have forgotten or that you didn't think of. For me, a few things are important when selecting photos. First, I just go over all the photos and I tag them. I select photos that tell the story or that add something to the story. It all has to make sense, but also, all the photos have to work together as a series. Now, what I mean is that you can select all the best photos and they all work separately, but zoom out and look at all of them together and they might not work together. It's difficult to explain, but I'll try to give you a few examples. So you've selected all the photos that you want to use in your story and now you're putting them together to make the series. Now first you need to know that there's a difference between a fixed timeline story and a non-fixed timeline story. My series never had a fixed timeline, I always decided the order of my photos. Which is a little bit easier. Or difficult maybe, I don't know. <laughs> 
and make sure to select photos with a story in mind. What I mean is that you don't always have to select your best photos. Sometimes you have to select a photo that's visually less interesting but really important for the story. Then put all the photos in front of you. You need to see them all. You can't create a series without seeing all the photos. And the first thing that's important is the opening shot. It has to pull the viewer in. It's the start of your story and really important. Same goes for the last photo, the end of your story. Now, sometimes I find the opening shot and the closing shot right away, but usually I change my mind a few times, but you have to realize that they're really important. More important even than everything that goes in between. And for me, the opening shot usually is an establishing shot to let the viewer know where the story takes place. So what else do I pay attention to? It's different things really. I look at the whole series and I try to create a balance. Yeah, that's it, a balance. For example, a lot of portraits next to each other ruins the balance. I try to find a shot to break them up, create a resting point, a moment of, of calmness, relaxing. That's what I basically do over and over again. Look at the whole series and create that balance. Another thing I look for is contrast. For example, a portrait next to a detail. Like the guy with the tattoos followed by this photo for example. They belong together. And for an exhibition, I would make sure that these two photos would hang next to each other. You see how you already have to think about that too? How it would look in a room? So it's all about creating that balance and simply put, just look at the whole series and make sure that not all the landscapes are put together and all the portraits and all the details. I mean, there's more than that, but that's the basic idea. What you have to do next is make sure that the pace of the series is okay. And what I mean by that is that the viewer will never look at the series as a whole like you just did. They will look at all the photos one by one. So you have to start looking from the beginning to the end one by one and see if the pace is okay. Do you have enough resting points? Do you have enough exciting parts? Do you want a boring, boring photo at number 6 or do you want a boring photo at number 5? Yeah, it's really difficult to explain because it's such a personal process I guess. I hope it makes sense. And you also have to eliminate photos and add photos. You're gonna have to decide how many photos you want in the story without ruining it. The bottom line is that you have to create a series that tells the story like you want it, but also a series that's visually pleasing with a nice pace. That's more or less what you need to do when putting it all together. Screen or print, it's totally different. Some photos that work on screen don't work as a print. And it's not the case for all the photos that you have selected for your project, probably. But if I want to make a printed series, I will print my photos and then select. I won't select photos on screen. A screen emits light and it's a different medium, so you have to treat it like that. Now, when I select for screen for my website, for example, it's pretty similar to what I showed you before. I put all the photos together in Photoshop or something like that. The process is the same, but the result might be slightly different. And also think about the difference between an exhibition and watching on screen. You know, if a person comes to your website, he watches the photos one by one. But if that person goes to an exhibition, he will walk through the room and go his own way. It's all things you have to think about when putting all those puzzle pieces together. So to summarize it all, if you want to make a series, you have to tell the story. You have to create balance in the whole series. It has to be visually pleasing. And it has to have a nice pace. Those are like the, the, the key elements, I think, for me when I create a series. Wow, this was a difficult video. My brain is overheating. Okay, guys, I'm gonna leave it at that. I don't want to make the video too long and it's already pretty long as it is. So if you have any questions, just ask me in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to help. And I know that all this is a little bit abstract sometimes, but that's because it's such a personal process, you know? Um, yeah, so thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.